Hi, I'm John. Hi, I'm Kaz. Isolation. Loneliness. Separation from people. Being told you couldn't do anything that you normally do in your life, or your normal life. Had a massive impact on my mental health, because my day-to-day -day living was flipped over, totally on its head. It wasn't. My personal experience wasn't very good, but I couldn't think about that because of the care I'm in, the work job I'm in, so I had to put other people first before me. I found it horrible. Really, really horrible. The impact was quite severe. People around me at work, not just the staff, but passengers, they became withdrawn, same as everybody. Their attitude towards me and other members of staff was about as negative as it can be. They would hardly say anything to you. They would ignore anything that you had to say. The impact was negative just for everybody. We literally have gone from having people that were quite jolly and cheerful on the buses to everybody totally negative about everything from getting up to going out to do whatever they had to do that was urgent. Even now, those same people hardly say anything. You still have a few that are jolly and cheerful, but the majority of people are ignorant, very, very rude, and don't talk to you very much. You know, it's just horrible. I think in the beginning, everybody was scared, weren't they? They didn't know they can come near you, come and talk to you, what to do. I used public travel to go to work. I went to a private home with people with learning disabilities, a diverse home for 18 people. I went up there to look after other people's family members so they were cut off from their daily life. They were cut off from their families. We had to change their way of living. We had to put them first before we could think about ourselves. We were masked, our hands split really sore because of the amount of PPE we had to keep wearing, constantly washing our hands. So I'm still having to wear masks now and gloves and aprons because I'm still looking after people. And you've got to try to explain to them it's something that's happened but they can't understand why it's happening. Why can't I go to the shop? Why can't I do this? Why can't I? I'm trying to look after you and then you have to deal with their mental health and push you back. And then you get overworked. You Sometimes I'd go to work for 36 hours straight and I wouldn't see anybody got on a bus, stayed there because there was no staff. Everybody was exhausted, working themselves to the bone, and then you still have to get up in the morning, still have to go and do your job because you can't say, oh, I'll go on furlough, because you can't, because you're working with people. I went on furlough for my own personal reasons. It was all part of the voluntary side to start with, able to get away from all the people that were being negative towards us bus drivers. The clap on a Thursday was nice. Everybody came out of their doors. Everybody started banging and clapping and it was lovely. But then it ended and then there was nothing. It was like a ghost town. You didn't see anybody until the next Thursday. Everybody came up clapping and then it slowly died and died and slowly wound itself down to almost nearly the end. Nobody, probably maybe two of us went out there and that was it. But everybody stayed away from each other, shut, got us in got in their doors as quickly as they could, done what they needed to do, in and out. But there was no conversation with anybody on this street. It's not so bad now, though. We've pretty much all come together, keeping an eye on the older residents on the street. That's just the community. We've lost loads, loads of people have died because of COVID. Whether it's directly caused by COVID or COVID has just made their medical condition worse but we were having one, maybe two a week dying from the community. People that we spoke to before, people that would say hi as they came past, you know, it was heartwarming to be able to talk to people when we could, even if it was just across the road for a conversation of, is everything okay? Do you need anything got? Because they couldn't get out. I didn't really see any of that because I was always at work. I didn't see as many people as you did. No. Because you were at home all the time and you saw people. I went to work in the morning and came home after it was dark. I didn't see anybody. My mental health has gone from okay-ish to quite severe. I've been put on several medications to level me out a bit. Struggle. 
still struggle. Every day is a struggle. I don't have good days. I have okay days. I have bad days and really bad days. And I'm going through different types of therapy to try and pull myself out of the hole that we've been forced into. It's a constant uphill battle. The hardest thing is not being able to physically go to the doctor. You can only talk to them over the phone. It's overly sterile. Nothing's going to go back to the way it was. It's still hell. Mm. And I don't think it's going to change for another year, two years. We're stuck with this and there's nothing we can do about it. It's, it's going to evolve. I've, where I was when they said, well, we've got to have our booster jabs. Were you going to lose your job? Yeah. So I, was, I had it reluctantly, but then the medical side of it, I ended up with blood clots. So I had to go on thinners and then I'm at risk for the rest of my life now. I've still got out the booster because they said, if you don't have them, you'll lose your job. It's my life. I've been doing it for 15 years. I can't just walk away. I can't walk away from people. My mental health, I think I blocked everybody out. I just concentrate on the stuff that I was doing. I still do it now. I look after everybody else apart from myself. And I think if I do anything for myself, they're going to criticise me because I've gone out and done that. I've just started getting my hair cut again because I, I grew it and grew it, didn't I? Mm. But the thing is, should I go out and do this for myself? Shouldn't somebody else need that my time instead? But I think that's just, I think that's just the way some of us think in the profession that we're in. This isn't going to go away. It's going to be around for years and years because it's going to be like a flu strain. They've already said that. We've already had a first booster. It's going to mutate and evolve every year. We're just going to have to deal with it, live with it. And then at some point, something else is going to turn up, unfortunately. Yeah. I have my boosters vaccines because of my medical condition, because I'm at risk anyway. And I've had COVID on a few occasions and it knocks me for six. It takes me months to recuperate after suffering with long COVID on top, as well as catching COVID and then any other virus that wants to be thrown my way. You know, I'm catching it. Doesn't matter what it is. In, in the beginning, people, you get the anti-protesters not having the jab. I can understand why they didn't want it. But at the same time, it stops you from ending up in the hospital on a ventilator. That's the whole point of it. It's not a miracle cure. It was to stop you ending up in that hospital. And that's what some people couldn't understand. 